What I have is a half inch ruler from Fonz and Porter. They may even get these at Joanne Fabrics is where I got mine at. Um, what you do is you lay it down and there's a line in the center here and you lay it down on your square and I just have a little pencil and you mark on each side of the line and that's going to give you a line that you are going to sew down and you want to do that on the light side of all of your fabrics. Now that I've got all of my seams marked that I'm going to sew in a little bit, it's time to match them up. And I've got three light fabrics here and two dark. So what I've done is I've gotten two of all the light and three of the dark. And I'm going to just lay them one on top of the other with the right sides together. And that's very important because then when you, um, eventually you're going to cut down the center and then you're going to press them open. And then if you have right sides together when you sew it, when you open it up, uh, the, both the right sides will be facing out. Now here's where the lines that we sewed on are going to be especially come in handy because you are just going to sew right down that line and just follow it with your needle. And now that I'm to the end of the first block, one of the things you want to do to save time and thread is to chain piece. And what you do with that is once you get to the end of one block, you just lift up your presser foot and then you line your fabric up so that the line is right in front of the needle and then you keep going. Now when you get to the end, just pull the thread out, clip it off at the edge, and then go ahead and pull right back to the front and start over, but this time you will be sewing the other uh, line that you marked with the half inch ruler. Once you've finished completed sewing everything, you're going to go ahead and cut clip the threads in between the pieces. Now comes the part where we are going to cut down the middle of this circle and for this part you'll want to get a ruler and they make rulers for quilters, they're see-through and they also have markings on them so that way you can tell how wide something is if you need to cut something to size. We have sewed 80 charm squares together, 40 light to 40 dark and then we cut them open uh, to make 80 triangles and now what we have to do is press them open and a lot of quilters like to use the word press instead of iron because you really just want to press the fabric because if you iron it and just move all over the board you're going to stretch the fabric out of place. So the first thing you want to do is take your iron and set the seam, just hold it down there and that helps make the thread sort of become one with the fabric so that it's not raised when the final product comes. And then you open it up. You want to have the dark side up when you do this because then you're going to open it up and this seam is going to be pointing or be underneath the dark side so that way you won't see it. Otherwise it would show through if you had it the other way around and it was on the light side. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to hold it and gently sort of move it over. And I'm going to line it up so that that is even with the edges of the triangle. And you can see where, we're actually going to cut this to four and a half inches here. And you can see where the four and a half inch is unmarked. And I'm just going to cut, cut the sides off here. But one of the things you want to do is make sure when you're laying out the pieces that you try not to put the same fabric right next to each other because it'll look a little goofy if you do that. Now each one of these pinwheels is going to be one block and for this quilt you're going to want four of these going across and five going down. Now it's time to sew again and here's where pressing all of those triangles towards the dark fabric is going to come in handy again. When You're actually not going to need to pin this because when you put it together the seams will butt up next to each other so you can kind of feel them and they kind of like, like get in there together next to each other or they kind of lock in next to each other. And so as long as you hold that seam and you've cut all your squares to a nice four and a half inch square, they're going to line up perfectly and you won't have to pin anything. You can just put it right into your machine. And I like to use a quarter inch presser foot so that way I have an exact quarter inch seam. Once you have all 20 blocks sewn together, then you're going to want to press them open 
And again, you're going to want to make sure that they are alternating so that the first block is the seam is going in a different direction than the second block. And that way, again, when you put them together, the seams will butt up nicely and will help you have sharper corners. Once you have all 20 of the quilt blocks sewn together and pressed open, it's time to join the quilt blocks together to make the quilt pop. What we're going to do next is create a quilt sandwich, and the sandwich is the first layer is the backing fabric, and for this quilt you're not actually going to see the back because it's going to be on the inside of the pillow, so I just have some unbleached muslin. It's sturdy fabric and it's cheap, so it's a good for a layer that you're not going to see. And then I have the warm and natural craft size batting. This is uh, has more cotton in it than some blends of batting, so it'll be good sturdy inner layer for the quilt. So what we're going to do is first you want to lay down your muslin lining flat out on the on the floor or a card table and if you lay it out on a card table you can tape it to the card table. You want it to be nice and smooth and taut but not stretched and then you do the same thing with the batting laying that layer next to it and then on the final layer is your quilt top. Now your quilt top you want it to be a couple inches smaller than your batting and your backing. Now that you have the quilt pin base in it's time to actually begin the quilting. I've attached a walking foot to my machine and what that does is it has an attachment on the top that moves the quilt along at the same rate that the feet dogs do at the bottom of this machine in the plate. And I'm going to quilt in the ditch. And to quilt in the ditch, you quilt along the seam lines. And you always want to quilt on the low side of the seam, meaning that if the seam is folded to the right, you want to quilt on the left side of the seam. And I'm just going to quilt along the long side of the triangles that make a nice line going all the way up the quilt. And then they'll also be going across the quilt. So I'll be quilting on a diagonal and it will look like there are diamonds or squares set on point um, if you look at it from the back when it's done. So what I've done is I've taken two pieces of uh, navy blue flannel to match the quilt top to go on the back and I've cut it to the width of the fabric which is or of the quilt which is 32 inches and then I cut each piece to 23 inches, which will give us a little extra room to uh, put a hem on the edges of the pillowcase. So what I've done here is I have pinned it so that there are two inches overhanging. And I'm going to press that because I'm also, once I'm done pressing it, I'm going to turn the rest of it under to create a hem. So now that I've got everything pinned and ready to sew to make the hem, I'm going to sew two seams each a quarter inch from the edge of the of the of the top edge and fold and then again from the hem. Once you're done sewing the the hems on the back of the pillow casing for the dog bed, give them one more press just to make sure that that seam is good and sturdy. And now you want to lay your quilted dog bed top with the right side up because we're going to sew the right sides together so that way when we flip it inside out, it will all be going the right way. Once you have all the sides pinned together, then you're going to sew along all of them it, using a quarter inch seam for the entire way around. And don't worry, you're not closing it in because since you did the pillow casing on the back, you're going to be able to open up through there. And again, I'm going to use a walking foot for this. All right, I've got it turned inside out. So we'll lay it out. We have our quilted dog bed almost ready. Now all you have to do is stuff the quilted dog bed. Once you're done stuffing the liner with the fill of your choice, go ahead and put it in the dog bed and insert it the way you would just a regular pillowcase for a sham and let your dogs enjoy it. 